Hey guys, this is the XRP Cowboy. Hey, this is Billy. We're going to talk about what's really going on with this Coinbase thing. Something that we foreseen, my roadies and dreamers, over 12 months ago, I believe. I think it was right after the lawsuit. We made a video on it. We didn't know how it would play out. We were just talking about how it all goes down. Please like and subscribe and we'll get into it. My dreamers, my roadies. Woke up one day. What did I find? Hands in my pockets. Memories on my mind. Think of the things I've lost long the way. But most of Because she's the cheese and I'm the macaroni. What are we talking about here? Let's get down to business. Let's do this. You know, uh, I'm in a group called the Money Making Group. There's less than 10 of us. And I've had some friends that are awesome that, that have wanted to join. But the thing is, is, you know, we're really not bringing anybody else into it. We did create a uh, Money Making a Group community. And it's beautiful the way our ideas, you know, we don't always agree on everything in this group. Um... But I will say this, there's this certainty and purity of when something makes sense that we all kind of, um, kind of just, it's almost like that one mind theory, you know, it was like, there was this, uh, they put these monkeys on an island with coconuts and it took them like two years or something to figure out how to open the coconuts. And then they put some more monkeys on an island not too far away from those monkeys, but the monkeys couldn't see what's happening with the monkeys on the island, okay? But they figured it out, like, reasonably quick, within weeks. And it's almost like, um, you know, this shared, um, let's just call it a connection. You know, I felt that way when I left New York for the first time. The further I, I got away from all the people, I almost had this feeling of depression. And I didn't know where it was coming from because I was in a great place. I just believe there's connections and there's things that are happening that we don't understand. And people say, oh, you can't transfer signals from one island to another through your mind. You can't do that. It's impossible. And then you realize you're talking into a video camera on your cell phone where you do that a hundred times a day, you know, and it's insignificant compared to the human mind. But that is not what this is about. I'm just saying, um, I'm going to, the reason I talk about you know, Minus Wells and Jungle Link is because they're in the money-making group. I talk about them a lot. I respect them. They're great. They're brilliant at what they do. And everyone offers something. You know, and I feel blessed because, like I said, um, you know, we it's almost like it's a filtration system. You know, all the garbage kind of gets left behind and the purest of everything comes out. And it's um, it's just interesting. So I would I would argue that... You know, there's a lot of groups out there that aren't as important as others, but I really do like the money making group community and you guys should join it um, and watch Minus Wells and Jungle Inc. Uh, I do want to talk about um, both of them briefly today, but we'll get into it. Second place is really the first loser. Okay. And a lot of people aren't going to like this, but I don't care because I'm just telling you my game, what I'm doing, how I'm thinking. Okay. You know, we've got um, some Coinbase issues. Gosh, I, how, do you, where, how do you start this? And how do you finish it? Because I want to finish it with the beginning. And I want to end it, you know. I want to begin it with the end, you know. But I got to get into this. Or you're going to lose interest. You won't like and subscribe. Click it. Or don't. I don't care. Tell me how you feel. But anyways, um, so I guess let's touch on this. The first place is the uh, second place is really the first loser. And I, some would say I'm using this out of context, but I believe that's Ethereum, the second loser. And you know what? They're going to lose and it's going to hit them hard. And I'm going to vert back to an old video that I talked about, like I said at the beginning over a year ago and how this happens, how do, how 90%, 99% of these cryptos go away. And I don't know if people are going to love it or hate it, but... If you're in, you know, an XRP holder, you win. So I wrote a couple things down. 
Oh, the million, how do you reach a million people? That's part of this, everyone. And this can make you successful if you apply this to, you know, to your work. Um, reset. Okay, let's start with something, some gloom and doom. Okay, how does a financial crisis happen? Well, you could have the stock market crash. Real easy. The crypto market would follow, which it has to a certain degree here, clearly. You could have a food shortage. You could have inflation. Not high inflation, because we don't have a high um, interest rate right now, but it moving up quickly and, and fiercely. You could have an illness, a pandemic. You could have war. Could, could um, you know, cause a financial crash. You could have cash shortages. You could have major layoffs with major industries. You could have, I'm trying to think, I wrote some things down. Um, well, it goes on and on. I actually have like 20 things written down. But the thing is, is we got to understand is, where most people aren't, that's where it is. But sorry, I'm being a jackass. But you got to understand this. Any one of those things can create a financial crisis. And there is, this applies, a financial reset coming in 2025. It should all be done and active by then. But what we have to ask ourselves is, if this isn't just, you know, getting rid of the old Escalade model and, and bringing in some new headlights and taillights here. Something's going to happen for this to happen because there's got to be a reason. I thought it was just going to be the pandemic, you know, but then the war and then the interest rates, the printing of money, all these things, everything we just talked about is happening right now. This is how a financial reset happens. This is how it has to happen. It's not going to be all sunshine and roses, okay? I'm just saying, you know, it would be nice, you know, so there may be some pain ahead. But I'm telling you, Mark, listen, you, we can hear these YouTubers, you know, analyze and saying how bad this market's going to get and it could. But I've ar I'll argue we've gone through a pandemic and I would have said it couldn't get any worse than this. Then we had a uh, stock market inflation, you know, that was supposed to rip the heart out of the market. Then we've had, we had the, um, you know, what the hell is it called? Um, the stable coin <laughs> crash that should have destroyed this. And then we had it happen again that was going to take this to nothing. Then we had a war that was going to, well, and we had a war that it was going to take this to nothing. It's still going on. And we have food shortages and we have inflation that's out of control, above 30%. Don't listen to this 9%. The top 10 goods are over 30%. That means your dollar's worth less than 70 cents. Financial shortages. That's what that is. That will create a financial crisis by itself. Just gas prices, where they're at, would fix inflation because it's price destruction. Price destruction is just a term that says when prices go too high, people stop buying because they don't have the money and they go down. Exactly what raising interest rates does. Point is we don't need it all, but we have to because they're trying to destroy the financial system. They're trying to destroy you and me is what I'm saying. Not, you know, which is the financial system because they're going to save us. But we're going to have to be real, real hungry, which makes me think maybe we could go, could go down another leg. But I'm just saying, we've dealt with any one of these things, you know, should have crushed crypto. And it, and it has to a certain degree, but to the levels that, you know, you got your blockchain backers talking about maybe 3,500. I just don't see it. I just can't see it. I would argue it's mathematically impossible. I mean, pull out a calculator and, or count on your fingers, you know. There's, there's too much the money behind it now. There's too many people that own it long term. You know, even in like Roth IRAs, you know, I just, you can't, I don't see it. Elon Musk just dumped a shit ton. And it, it, he, he, the market didn't change. It was like nothing. It's like the Dark Knight didn't, lost his power. A year ago, that would have crushed it 20% Bitcoin, maybe more. 
great, it's already down. But I am going somewhere with this, and it's the exchanges. The real story. The truth. Okay, so okay, so what's happening here is, you know, an old manager for Coinbase <clears throat> gave a friend some tips, right? <clears throat> or a family member, right? Who cares, really? And now he's, like, in big trouble. You know, it's insider trading, right? In an unregulated space. So it, it doesn't, you know, there's some regulations there, clearly, right? It's funny how the regulations apply to us, you know, in certain areas, but in other areas they don't, right? And now there's, but that's not the real story. If it was just that, Coinbase would be fine. This is an individual, okay, that did manage Coinbase, but... And, you know, they could get in some trouble with shareholders and manipulation. But, you know, from the you know government and everything and prison, prison sex. I mean, not prison sex, but, you know, what's going to happen to this person. You know, it's it's ridiculous. And, you know, and, and I'll tell you this. And I know, um, what's his name, Digital Asset Investor talked about this. If that's illegal, how come Nancy Pelosi isn't going to jail? But I've talked about her, too, in the past. And he was referencing because her husband just bought a bunch of NVIDIA because some, you know, something passed or something and it's going to rock it. But whatever, that they had something to do with, with, that she had something to do with. But the same, this is the thing. The same thing happened with Tesla that we know. Of. Um, that's two big companies right before Tesla, like, rocketed up, like, you know, two, three hundred percent, in a, you know, like six months, a year later. So she did it with that, too. Maybe we should buy some NVIDIA. But um, the point of that is, is this. I'd say I'd call her a government official. I mean, you know, she's protected. But that is so much worse than this, this one guy helping somebody buy a modest amount, comparatively speaking, I'm sure, compared to what her husband did. Be, besides that, it's like the, a police officer breaking the law and then arresting you for it. You know, he, she's supposed to be held to a higher level, you know, you know, but she isn't. So it's ridiculous. But the real problem is they're naming the SEC is trying to leverage that like that was the weak link in the chain. OK, you know, so because they're they're approaching it like I don't know how many seven or eight of them are are securities. Well, and that's their leverage into Coinbase. And that's what Jungle Inc. was saying. That's the real story behind this. It's not this fall guy. You know, this Patsy, this poor SOB. It's They're leveraging that to go after Coinbase by selling. You know, they were on uh, registered securities. Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm not, I believe they're, they're not. Yeah, they're in the same position uh, XRP and Ripple right now are in. But they, like Jungle said, they don't have the money to defend themselves. So they could lose, which would cast a, a shadow over all these clouds, you know. And, and you know, it's scary because it, it, I'm worried that mu could they try to drag this? How could they drag it out any longer? But I've been saying that for a year. So that case is over before theirs. I don't know. That's a concern. I, I don't know enough about it. I'm an idiot with that stuff because I thought the case would be over already. But point is, is this is a problem. And we talked about this. Like I said, a long time ago, and and the idea was, how do you reach a million people? The SEC can't go after 20,000 coins, securities, as they would put it. How do you reach a million people? Like if you're a musician, you make them come to you. That's the only way. You you have a website, and you get like a, an energy about yourself out there to where all these people want, want to you know buy your music. And they all have to come to you because you can't go to a million individuals just like they can't go to 20,000. It's just impossible. So this is about the exchanges. <clears throat> and I said that. I said they're going to go after the exchanges. But my narrative was to make the 99% go away. That's the only way they can because they can't attack them. They only have a certain amount of time to do it to the SEC. And maybe it's seven years or four years. I don't know. But they can't go after them all. So... 99% of them won't go away unless they go after, unless a million people come to one, which would be the SEC going to the exchanges. And that was my narrative. But my narrative was, 
<clears throat> second place is really the first loser. You know, they're talking about these little companies. And, and Gary made it clear, ETH is not, you know, free. And, and it's going to be the Ethereum Foundation. And, and when they, and I have publicly said that I've been liquidating my Ethereum. I, I mean, I've made money. I bought it, you know, back when it was below $500. I mean, a lot of it at 300 but three something. But the thing is, is I, I'm not, um, I'm liquidating all my Ethereum stuff. Everything attached to Ethereum, everything built on Ethereum, okay? Um, and the reason being is not to liquidate my position, get out of the market, I'm just putting that money in something else that I know is safe. That's why I like VeChain. I'm not worrying about ETH, okay? You know, it's, you know, I like XRP. I like, well, I don't own XLM anymore. But I, I, I like that from that narrative perspective. Who knows? But um, the point is, is they're going after the exchanges. And these little coins are nothing. Um, they'll leverage all that to go after the big dog and... You know, I don't know how this works out or how this looks, but I'm pretty sure 2.0 is going to be part of the deal. And it, you know, the SEC going after them as a security. There's a lot of money in ETH, but Bitcoin, you're the only one I think is safe. And I'm not a Bitcoin guy. I don't see the value there anymore. I mean, store of value, I mean, whatever, I get it, offset inflation, I do think it's it's going to decouple from the stock market and the dollar and all that stuff, but <clears throat> I like that, but I'm just, I'm just saying it's, um, tech, the technologically speaking, if that's correct, it's just not what XRP is, I mean, they pretty much said, this isn't good, we need to make it better, and they created XRP, so the point of the matter is, is once ETH goes down, I'm pretty sure 90% of the projects are built on ETH. I don't know if any of them are safe. I don't know how this looks. I don't know how 2.0 is better. I just don't see it. You know, I just don't see it how it's better than what we already have. So, you know, generally when you make some, improve something, you're making it better than the industry. You know, it's, there's still stuff better, you know. So point is, is, you know, the real problem is with them going after these exchanges, it's going to be Ethereum. And there's a lot of money there. So, you know, what are you going to do? So I guess we're ending at the beginning. Second place is really the first loser. And, you know, minus, he, he, he went into this minus. I would watch his video tonight too because he has his own take on things. But I would definitely watch Minus's video in Jungles. But sorry, this isn't like too exciting. But just know, I mean, do I think Coinbase is going out of business and bankrupt? I think that's ridiculous. It's funny. I believe it's Fidelity. I was listening to a YouTuber say you can check your Coinbase account from Fidelity. You know, and I mean, what's that mean for your uh, iTrust Capital? Because Coinbase is the custodian of all that stuff. I'm just saying, I maybe I see a partnership happening or some kind of a you know a purchase. That's possible. What I'm certain of is I lost a lot of lost a lot of money when Coinbase went public. You know, you know, and maybe that's part of it. You know, you gotta remember regulations, a lot of that is just the government figuring out how to make as much money from this as possible and in the name of people not losing theirs. Please like and subscribe. This was, a, I'm exhausted. I had a busy day today. Short video, but it's 19 minutes. Oh my God, sorry. Please like and subscribe. This video is over. My dreamers, my roadies.